Hey, Josh from Bernal Cutlery. Welcome to the Western Wall. Most of the time you might see me behind all the Japanese knives on the other side of the room, but we stock a lot of Western knives and uh, one of our favorites has been K. Sabatier. This is uh, one of Thiers' oldest uh, continually operating Sabatier brands. The name Sabatier is not trademarked, so you'll find a variety of older Sabatiers. If you're into old knives and you are lucky enough to find old Sabatiers, you'll find a lot of different trademarks, a lot of different uh, names along with Sabatier. So um, they've been at it since the early 19th century and uh, definitely still making great quality stuff with a lot of the independent craftspeople of uh, Tiers. And um, sometimes we are lucky enough to find old ones that are unused. So new old stock or new vintage. This is uh, a recent find. Uh, this is a big knife. This is a 14-inch um, uh, chef's knife in carbon steel. This is from the 50s or 60s. This is also from the 50s. This is a Nogent style, and this is a, a bit older, or maybe Cuisine Massif, as they would say in Tiers, Nogent being a rival city to Tiers uh, for knife making in France. However, the term Nogent style has kind of been adopted for, for this old style uh, French handle. So this is a uh, old knife with the old handle that is not newly put together, and your, uh, your key to seeing if it's been reassembled or if it's old production is this uh, rat tail tang going through the handle with a brass or other metal collar uh, kind of holding it in. So both of these old knives were drop forged and then hand forged. So what that means is that uh, they, their form was shaped on a large uh, multi-ton hammer that has an open die where a uh, hot metal rod is put in between the two, uh, between the anvil and the hammer that comes down and with a couple blows forms uh, the shape of the knife. And um, that's still the method of production for uh, the Sabatier uh, forged chef's knives that are forged uh, in tier. And um, on the old ones, they would be hand forged on a big trip hammer, a giant mechanical hammer uh, afterwards. And that would be taking that drop forge blank and drawing out the tang and drawing out the, um, the blade as well. The geometry on these will be a little bit, ha have a little bit more of a steeper taper in the blade. And then the tang, this is the real big tell on this, is the tapered tang. So tang on a non-hand forged, drop forge knife would be straight typically. Um, so, this is a really cool find here. Um, finding an unused knife from this time period is not super common. They're around, but, you know, they're never going to be made again like this. And so, it's really super cool to find this. This size uh, was the last of this production uh, technique to be made this way. So, the first ones that they stopped doing, the hand forging after the drop forging, were knives that were the smallest knives, so the little pairing knives and such. And that stopped in the 60s. And then um, the last ones to be hand forged after drop forged were in the early 90s. Uh, but this one predates that uh, by far. But um, really stoked to get a couple of these. We didn't get a lot of these, but these are, these are really cool. Just have a really awesome feel to them. Big knives like this, these 14 inch knives, um, we're always curious about, you know, so people would ask, I mean, it's an obvious question, what do you use it for? Um, and uh, one explanation that, that we had, uh, that I had read a number of times is that like, you know, this would be like the chef knife, the, 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 the chief, you know, in the kind of old brigade, brigade system kind of world of like chef, chief, you know, that like uh, hierarchical kind of thing. You know, the big, the big chef would have the big knife, right? Maybe that was true, but, um, we asked a bunch of old timers in Thiers and in Solingen, what was the use of the 14 inch chef's knife? Cause it's, it's just so big, right? And the one answer that we got independently that kind of all 
that 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 overlap that seemed to really be the the through piece here is roulade. So cutting a roulade. So that would be like a a, a tougher cut of beef, like a, a shoulder, where you would take take your large cut and you're gonna cut out a thin strip. And so you cut that beef into a thin strip and then you add ingredients to it, roll it back up uh, and cook it and it's, you know, made more tender that way and you can, um, you know, do a different kind of treatment with it and you can, um, you know, bring in more fats and flavors and all that kind of stuff with it. But um, they're also great for winter squash. If you have a ton of parsley to do, you know, in a professional environment, Big knife like this gets that work done so fast. Um, and, you know, it's just cool to have. I don't know. I'm, I just love big fortune stuff. Thanks for checking in.